Yo, welcome to Tufting 101, my four part video series where I'm gonna try and teach you everything you need to know to get started tufting. Today, we're gonna talk about the equipment you need. So things like the tufting gun, the frame, the scissors and pliers and etc. In the other three videos, I'll talk about the materials you need. I'll explain the techniques and help you troubleshoot problems. And I'm also gonna cover all the costs and business opportunities of doing something like tufting. But today we're sticking to the hardware. So here is everything I think you need to know about tufting equipment. All right, first things first, we're gonna talk about the tufting gun. The major category here is cut pile versus loop pile. The names are pretty descriptive. Cut pile cuts the yarn every time it pokes through, uh, where loop pile just loops it around again. For the most part, it only affects the surface of the rug, so it's good to know what kind of surface you prefer on your rugs. But since loop piles don't cut the yarn, you'll be doing that yourself. So at the end of the row, you'll either have to cut the yarn or you can modify your technique so you just zigzag back and forth with the gun. This makes loop pile like a tiny, tiny bit more difficult to work with than cut pile. But in other ways, it kind of makes up for it. Like undoing a row of yarn with a loop pile is much easier. I'd say just overall pick based on the surface of the rug that you prefer. If you like the loops, go with that. If you like it cut, go with that. Personally, I like cut. I just like how it looks. I think when it comes to doing accurate designs, what's much more important is the materials you use and the technique you use to get the rug done. And I cover both those things in other Tufting 101 videos. Check them out. Another major set of categories in tufting guns is electric guns versus pneumatic guns. Electric guns are gonna be cheaper, more beginner friendly, where pneumatic guns, you need an air compressor and it uses compressed air to help you tuft the rug. But those are more like in the thousand dollar range, definitely a professional tool once you get into the pneumatic guns. In this video, I'm just gonna cover electric guns. That's all I really know. I've never used a pneumatic gun. All right, I'm gonna break it down for you on screen, actually. These are the three most popular entry-level electric tufting guns that I've seen. There are more options, but I'm gonna keep it to these three. They seem to be solid as heck. These options are the AK-1, the AK-2, and the ZQ-2. The AK-1 and the AK-2 are nearly identical. The only difference is that the AK-1 does cut pile, where the AK-2 does loop pile. The ZQ-2, however, that can do both cut and loop pile. You can swap it if you take it apart and change something on the inside with a screwdriver and put it back together. You can swap between cut and loop pile, which is super cool. However, the price does reflect that. From my research, the ZQ-2 is about $450, $500, something like that where the AK-1 and the AK-2 are about $275, $300. And another spot where they differ is the weight. The AK-1 and the AK-2 are both about three pounds, where the ZQ-2 is about six pounds. So it's almost like you're paying and weighing for both cut and loop pile. I've heard great things about the ZQ-2. I've never used one actually. I have the AK-1 personally. I love it. But all of these guns, you get a Drew stamp of approval on them. I love them. But now if those prices scare you, there is another option. You can also make rugs using a simple punch needle. This thing costed like $10, so it's much cheaper, much simpler. The only real downsides to it is just that it takes so much longer. Personally, I don't really have the patience for a punch needle. It is, however, how I entered the hobby. When I first found about rug making, I just wanted to get my toes wet and see if I liked it, so I got a punch needle for $10, realized I loved it, invested in a tufting gun, and I've never looked back. And it's worth noting, I do know a couple textile artists that only use a punch needle. I spoke with Hannah Epstein, who has these awesome rugs. She told me she prefers how a hand-punched rug looks and she does not seem to mind spending the time doing it. Definitely recommend checking out her work if you're looking for inspiration. Also, my fellow YouTuber Curry Goat. What a legend. He's awesome. He actually is the one that got me to buy a punch needle at first. He doesn't have a tufting gun, I don't think. He's only doing it with a punch needle, yet he's still making these amazing creations and he keeps making videos about it, so it seems like he loves it. All I'm trying to say is these guns aren't cheap. This hobby isn't really that cheap. However, if you can't resist the urge, get a punch needle and get started that way. You'll love it. I guarantee it. 
A lot of people ask me where you buy these things. The punch needle was like $10. I think I got it on Amazon. They also sell them on Etsy, eBay, probably at craft stores too. To buy a tufting gun, you'll want to find somewhere online. You'll want a place that you know you can trust. There's a lot of like cheaper made tufting guns, kind of knockoffs going around on Amazon and eBay. I've heard scary stories about those. People say that they've had them break after just a month of owning them. I've never used one, but I would advise to stay away from those. Usually you can tell them apart just by the price. Those are usually like $100 cheaper. You get what you pay for. I recommend buying a gun near the prices that I mentioned earlier. There aren't too many websites out there doing this yet. And sadly, a lot of websites are actually sold out of the guns or on back order because of this. At the time I'm making this video, a lot of websites have like a two month wait. That sucks. I'm sorry. I don't really know a way around it. You might just have to wait. With that said, I've heard a lot of good things about tuftinggun.com. I got my gun from a seller on Etsy. Sadly, they are no longer available. They were awesome. Otherwise, there are fake ones on eBay and Amazon. However, there are also real ones on eBay and Amazon. So sadly, the best advice I can give you is to just scavenge the internet. And hopefully a few months after I make this video, the tufting gun supply chains will be all figured out and it'll be raining tufting guns across the world. Okay, so you got your tufting gun. Now you need a tufting frame. I recommend you build your own frame just because it's super cheap and easy. It's a fun project. I do have a tutorial on how to build this exact frame, a nice little tabletop frame. On my YouTube page, I will link that below. Otherwise, I think you can buy the frames just unassembled and all you have to do is assemble it. Once again, I'd recommend building your own. It's fun, it's not hard. Go watch my video, I'll explain it all, hopefully make it look easy. But to put it simply, you just need a frame. This frame needs a way to hold the fabric so you can staple into wood. Otherwise, I do recommend using carpet tack strips. Quick tip is that the carpet tack. A quick tip. A quick tip is that the carpet. Ta oh my God. A quick tip is that the carpet tack strips are directional. So you want to make sure they're pointing away from the frame so that they actually grip the fabric. It's super helpful if your frame has a system to feed the yarn in. All that has to be is just a couple hooks or eyelets to help keep the yarn away from the surface and have it go into your gun nicely. I cover that in my video on how to build a tufting frame. You'll just have a much better experience all around that way. And the remaining equipment I am grouping together and calling miscellaneous equipment. A lot of it you probably already have or a lot of it you don't even need. First off, you're going to need scissors. You'll definitely be cutting a lot of yarn and a lot of fabric. So really any pair of scissors will do the trick, but I do recommend getting some specialty scissors. They make carpet shears that help you cut a flat surface. Little tiny scissors will help you cut small strands of yarn. And also having fabric scissors dedicated for cutting fabric is also a pretty good idea. Additionally, having some tweezers or pliers will help if you have to pull out individual strands of yarn. Sometimes our human fingers are a little too big and chubby to get in there. Additionally, you'll need a tool to help you spread the adhesive on the back of the rug. Just some sort of like spreader. I think these cost me like a dollar, but you could even use like an expired credit card or something. <laughs> Additionally, having a projector helps if you're going to be trying to copy artwork. So if you're going to make a rug of a logo or a specific animal or a specific photo, basically, if you're working from a reference, having a projector will be super helpful to copy the art onto the fabric. However, it's not necessary to use a projector. You can just freehand it. Otherwise, you can use a grid. And I do also have a video on how to use a grid. But a projector will be best, quickest, cleanest. And the final piece of equipment to note is something that I've never actually used, but I want to. It's a dream product of mine. And this is a car carpet like shaver like sheer they're pretty expensive the ones i was looking up were like thousands of dollars but you can also even use like a handheld one maybe even one you'd shave a head with or something but i've seen people that have like shaved designs into like a solid color of yarn i don't know it looks awesome it looks next level I'm obsessed and I've never even touched one. All right, that is it for equipment, but I have so much more to teach you. This is only one video in a four part series I'm calling Tufting 101. Today we talked about the equipment. In the other videos, I'm gonna talk about the materials you need. So the yarn, the fabric, the glue. In another one, I'll talk about all the techniques you need to know to tuft your best rug. I'll also help you troubleshoot some problems in that video. In the final video, I'm gonna make it on the costs and potential business opportunities of doing something like tufting. So I'll put them in the description below if one of those topics is calling your name. <laughs>
Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. I am out here chasing my dreams. I'm just trying to make cool things and inspire all of you to do the same. If you take a look around my YouTube channel, I think you'll pick up on that. So please subscribe and support me on this journey. Thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Play the world. <laughs> Whoa, can it focus? Can it do it? Oh, a little back. Oh, there's the close up. <laughs> Bye.